Welcome to another exciting video everyone. Today I'm going to be doing something I've never done before and I'm going to be ranking all of the roller coasters at a certain park and I'm starting off with none other than my home park of Cedar Point in Sandusky, Ohio. Fun fact, even though I've never lived in Sandusky, I was actually born in Sandusky. Before we jump into these rankings, this list is ranked from worst to best, and obviously these are all my opinions. I don't think I have to explain that any further. And also, I actually do have pretty solid opinions on most of Cedar Point's coasters, but this list can fluctuate a little bit, but Starting off the list, we have the obligatory kitty coasters at the end of the list. 17 is Wilderness Run, and 16 is Woodstock Express. Woodstock Express is just a really common Vacoma kitty coaster. It's a pretty good kitty coaster. Wilderness Run, there is honestly nothing notable about it. It opened in 1979. It was originally called Junior Gemini, and it was Intamin's first coaster. So, there's that. At the number 15 spot, I have Corkscrew. A very historic ride, but a a not very well liked ride and for good reason. I've actually gotten a few pretty solid rides on it this year but even still it just has a not very good layout, nothing special. There is one really good pop of airtime, but that might hurt with over the shoulder restraints. You do get your head banged around sometimes quite a bit. It's just a typical aerodynamics corkscrew type coaster, nothing too special. Number 14 is the aerodynamics mine coaster, Cedar Creek Mine Ride. The second oldest coaster in the park, it's 50 years old this year. As of 2019, it opened in 1969, and it's a pretty fun ride, a decent family ride. When I was like four or five years old. This was my favorite coaster and the only one I really rode besides the kitty coasters. It was my favorite ride. It's pretty fun for the most part, but it's really jerky. It can hurt a little bit and those lap bars are just awful. Coming in at the number 13 spot is Iron Dragon. I feel like Iron Dragon is a decently significant step up from Cedar Creek Mine Ride and the other coasters before it. Nothing too crazy, but these aerodynamics suspended coasters are becoming less common nowadays. And this is one of the more family-oriented ones, but it's still a really fun ride. Lots of cool swinging action, and you go through all the trees and over the water. Very picturesque looking, and it's a really fun family coaster, I would say. All right, so the number 12 spot is probably gonna trigger a lot of people. There's a lot of people that would probably rank this quite a bit higher, although a lot of people also aren't the biggest fans of it, and that is Val Raven, the 2016 dive coaster. I'm sorry guys, I just, I could not rank this any higher than this. I've given it several chances and I was just so underwhelmed by this ride and I continue to be underwhelmed by it every time I ride it. I just find it to be so forceless, especially given its size. It looks so intimidating. It's a great looking ride, but the layout's just really bland, doesn't do much. The first drop is pretty good with that holding brake, and the zero G roll is pretty good. It gives you some good hang time, but that's about all this ride has going for it in my opinion. Moving on, we have number 11, Wicked Twister. I actually really like Wicked Twister quite a bit. It's nothing too spectacular, but it is kind of impressive given that it's an impulse coaster that it reaches 215 feet. It's very tall. It's an intense ride, has a great launch, and I just love especially sitting towards the back and going up that backward spike. Both of the spikes on this one have a twist, which is awesome. And it's just a really fun ride that typically has no weight. There's usually barely ever anybody in the station. This is actually the only coaster I've ever gotten a ride all to myself on, and that that was actually just a couple weeks ago where I sat all the way in the back and I was the only person on the train. That was pretty awesome. Next up at number 10 we have Gemini. This was the first big record breaking coaster for Cedar Point in terms of breaking height and speed records anyway. When it opened in 1978 it was the tallest and fastest coaster in the world. It stands at a height of 125 feet, reaches 60 miles an hour, and it's an aerodynamics racing coaster. It's a hybrid coaster as well, and I just think this is a really fun ride. It doesn't give great airtime, but if you sit in the third row of the first car, the magic seat as it's called on Magnum, that actually works for this ride a little bit too as it'll give you better airtime than any of the other places I've noticed. But anyway, Gemini is just a classic ride and it's just really fun overall and I don't think it beats you up too much. A lot of people complain about its roughness, but I thoroughly enjoy it. Number nine is Rougarou. When this was Mantis and featured stand-up trains, it was pretty bad. It's still not an excellent coaster, 
but I think it's improved a lot with the floorless trains. The new color scheme looks great. It has a unique name. I didn't like this a whole lot at first, but I've actually improved my score on it since the first time I've ridden it because I've gotten a lot of really good rides on it and it's really intense. It has a decent layout and I, I just think it's a pretty fun ride that typically doesn't have a weight. I won't really wait for it if the wait's any more than like five minutes, but it's a really good supporting coaster. Number eight is the classic Blue Streak, the oldest coaster in the park. This is 55 years old this year. It opened in 1964, and I think this is a great wooden coaster. I'm glad that they've done a lot of retracking to it recently. I rode it once last year, and it was a really rough ride, and I was so disappointed because the last time I'd ridden it before that was seven years prior, and I had always thought Blue Streak was a great ride. It was very rough last year, but this year it's running terrific, given great airtime as usual pretty smooth and it's just a really fun classic ride not much else to say here at the number seven spot this might trigger some people a lot of people would rank this one pretty highly and I still love this ride. From this spot all the way to the number one spot, all of these coasters are fantastic. These are the elite coasters of Cedar Point, in my opinion. So starting off at number seven, we have Top Thrill Dragster. Opened as the tallest and fastest in the world, 420 feet high, 120 miles per hour, and three seconds. I mean, it's a great, intense launch, very smooth, and it has the Intamin T-bar restraints, so it's very open, and there's really nothing else like it. It's so intense and even though it's so short and only has one element, it's worth it. Even if you have to wait an hour for it, it's worth riding this. It's a fantastic ride and I actually like it a lot more than I used to. I didn't appreciate it as much before even though I really liked it but I've really come to appreciate this ride a lot and who knows maybe it'll move up the rankings in the future. Number six. Now before I talk about the number six and the number five spots respectively I have to say I always flip-flop on these two coasters but I'll pretty much always say that this is how it is for a couple of reasons but I really enjoy these two rides a lot and I think they're fantastic coasters although one is hated on by quite a few people. I think it's a great ride. Number six spot, we have Gatekeeper. I know a lot of people, enthusiasts especially, aren't really big fans of this ride. A lot of people don't care for those vest restraints. I personally don't have a problem with them. They can be a little uncomfortable at times. They dig in a little bit, but it's nothing too bad. I find it to be really comfortable. I think it has a couple pretty intense spots, and a lot of people call this forceless, which I don't really agree with. It's not the most intense ride out there, but I think it's pretty good, and it has a couple decent moments. I love the keyhole element and the zero g roll and overall i just think it's a great ride some of the rides i get on it it's really been hauling and sometimes it actually gives pretty decent airtime on the big camelback hill and even on the small bunny hop at the end that small bunny hop typically doesn't have any airtime but sometimes i'll get a decent little pop there so that's always nice downside of this ride is it's pretty much done after that mid-course break run that's really the end of the ride experience it slows you down a lot the helix and that bunny hop are just nothing great at the number five spot is raptor this is a really classic B&M inverted coaster. It's a very intense ride, has a great layout. It sprawls itself across the main midway at the front of the park. It looks fantastic. This thing flies and it's very smooth for the most part. I've had a couple really rough rides on it, but 99% of the time it's running very smooth and it's super intense. And that helix at the end, holy cow, that is leg numbing. It is so intense and I love it. Now going into my number four coaster at Cedar Point, I just have to say this is when the list really gets good. I think the top seven at Cedar Point are all great, great coasters, but the top four especially are the ones that I find to be truly elite coasters. Kicking off the top four, the number four spot we have Magnum XL200. This opened in 1989, so it's 30 years old at this point. This is one of the most historic coasters ever built as it was the first full circuit coaster to reach the 200 foot height barrier. It was also the fastest at the time at 72 miles per hour. And those bunny hops going back towards the final break run provide some of the most insane ejector airtime out there. It is crazy. This ride is just crazy. The first half is not the strongest, but wow, does that last half make up for it? It's really fun. It's a really fun ride. 
I don't find it to be rough. It can be kind of bumpy. It's an old aero coaster, so that's kind of a given. It doesn't have the best restraints, but they do their job fine, I think. I love Magnum XL200, and this is a ride I could just marathon over and over and over. A lot of times, I make this the first and last ride of the day when I go to Cedar Point, because I like to park in the back parking lot when I go quite a bit. Great ride. The number three spot is the famous Millennium Force. For the longest time, actually up until this year, I had this over another very popular Intamin coaster at Cedar Point, and you all know what it is at this point. But Millennium Force is a fantastic ride. Riding it this year, I decided that it's my third favorite at Cedar Point, but wow, this is a near-perfect ride in my opinion. It doesn't do nearly everything perfectly. From a sentimental standpoint, Millennium Force is probably my favorite, but the ride experience itself, which is what I'm basing this list on, it's my third favorite. And it's a great ride. I mean, it flies. It's one of the tallest and fastest coasters out there. It does have a very long, drawn-out layout, and it's not that intense after you get done with that first overbank turn. But this thing just hauls through the course. It sprawls itself over that section of the park. It's awesome to watch, really fun to ride. And even though this ride isn't focused on airtime, it provides some really good moments of airtime. Sometimes the two camelback hills on the ride give pretty weak airtime, but there's been a lot of times I've rode this as well where I get really good floater airtime on those hills, even flow jector. At the number two spot is Maverick, which opened in 2007, an Intamin Blitz coaster, the first Intamin Blitz coaster, and this is the only coaster to have opened at Cedar Point over the last 20 years that has not broken any records. But wow, this is a really intense ride, one of the most intense rides out there, and one of the most intense at Cedar Point for sure. It's a long ride, it has an awesome launch halfway through and it is fast. It has a couple moments of amazing ejector airtime. It's super smooth. A few years ago, they replaced the hard plastic over-the-shoulder restraints with soft ones, and they're wonderful. And this is just a really intense, really fun, outstanding ride. And it's the first coaster that I sort of got to keep an eye on the construction and everything with back when I became a coaster enthusiast at 10 years old. So it also has a special place in my heart as well. Go watch Maverick Review for a little more on that. And finally, coming in at the very surprising, shocking, number one spot. The one that nobody saw coming. Pipe Scream. No, but for real, you guys knew this. Steel Vengeance is the best coaster at Cedar Point, in my opinion, and it's not really even close. This is an absolutely perfect 10 for me. It provides amazing, amazing ejector airtime all throughout. The most airtime out of any coaster on the planet. 205 feet tall, the currently tallest operating hybrid coaster, and the layout is just perfect. It's a really long ride. It has amazing pacing, great airtime throughout, awesome inversions, and there's really nothing else quite like it that I've ridden. And I'd be very willing to vouch for this as the best coaster in the world. It's by far my favorite coaster I've been on up to this point. And I believe that it's going to be really hard for this one to be beaten. Let me know what you guys think about the coasters at Cedar Point. How do you rank them? I would like to hear your thoughts. Cedar Point is an amazing park. It's pretty much known as having the best coaster collection out of any park on the planet. In my opinion, there are seven really top-notch roller coasters at Cedar Point, and then four really strong supporting coasters, and then even a couple decent ones besides all of those that are just fun or decent family coasters or whatever. Cedar Point has a very well-rounded collection of coasters for the most part, and you absolutely have to get to this park. If you haven't been and you're into coasters, this is the place to be. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Got a lot more reviews, park rankings, speculation videos coming out in the future. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Don't forget to like my page on Facebook, Coaster Daddy, and follow me at Coaster Daddy Official on Instagram. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Coaster Daddy. Bye.